All right, welcome to chapter 10, section six, called two-dimensional figures. This is for integrated math one, or IM one. So a couple of things that you'll see on your screen here. Uh, the first thing is gonna be the due date. You don't see that on my teacher preview, but you'll see it on your student screen. The second thing is the number of attempts. You always have unlimited attempts on tests, homework, and quizzes. Um, the number of questions just lets you know how many questions are on this particular assignment. Grading policies, best score, so whichever attempt is the best one is one to keep and partial credits enabled. So if you answer one of 10 questions correctly, you get credit for one question or however many you answered correctly. And here it says, please remember once you start your homework, you must finish it before you can work on anything else. What that means is once I click start down here, in the bottom right corner, we will see the submit assignment button. I don't see that on my teacher preview, but you will see it on your student screen. Um, this is how we finish an assignment is by clicking that submit assignment button. Um, so if you just leave this screen, by closing the tab up here, like hitting a little X or closing your computer and you don't click the submit assignment button, the, the system, Alex is gonna assume you wanna leave this attempt open um, and it's gonna lock everything else out, including resources until you come back and finish this assignment. So that's one really big reason to click submit assignment. It also saves your place. So if you started to answer some of these and you have green check marks on them, it's gonna save that. It's not gonna make you restart. Um, so that's one big reason to click that button. The second big reason to click the submit assignment button is that it actually affects the grade book. So your teacher can see what you've been working on. Until you click that button, your account's basically frozen. We can't see anything. So two big reasons to always, always, always click submit assignment. On the side here, we have explanation, example, and message center. Explanation tells you you're going to lose your question attempt um, because it's going to give you a solution to this question. So it's not going to give you the answer and then let you come type it in. Example. We'll show you an example of something very similar to what we're looking at. It'll give you a little bit of background if you need that. Um, you can close this and open a new example if you'd like. And you can also message your teacher directly from this screen. It's going to tell me I can't because I'm in teacher preview. Um, but normally it would open a message. It'll attach a picture so we can see exactly where you are, you know, to help you move forward. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, so it says find the perimeter of the following polygon. Um, be sure to include the correct unit in your answer. So perimeter, um, whenever we're doing a perimeter of any shape, it doesn't matter what the shape is, um, it's a little different for a circle, but it's still kind of the same idea. Um, it's the measurement around the outside. Um, so there's a specific formula when we do a circle, which we'll get there at some point here um, during this chapter. Um, it might even be toward the end of this section. Um, I know we do it very soon. Yep, it is actually. It's number 10 on this very section. Um, we're going to talk about how to do the perimeter of a circle, which we call the circumference instead of just a perimeter. Um, but doing any other shape when they have, you know, these nice vertices, these corners, all we do is we just add them up around the outside. So I'm going to go 15 plus 11 plus 14 plus 15. Does not matter in what order I go. I could go this way, 15 plus 15 plus 14 plus 11. Um, totally doesn't matter which way you add those um, and in fact 15 plus 15 gives me 30 um, 14 and 11 gives me um, 35 nope sorry um, 25 I don't know why I said 35 boom um, dang it I don't see why I can't write that I don't know why I was all messing that up so gives me 25 and then I can very easily add these together to get 55 um, so I have 55. The other big thing that it's going to make you do here is it says be sure to include the correct unit. So it's in inches. This is just a measurement along the outside. I haven't, I'm not doing length times width. I'm not multiplying anything. I'm adding. So this is just a longer measurement along the side. So it's still just in the one unit. And since they're all an inch, it's going to be in inches. All right. So the next one here, it says find the perimeter of the rectangle be sure to write the um, correct unit in your answer. So again, we have to choose our unit. So what do we know about a rectangle that can help us with this one? If I know this side is 11 and the bottom is 20 meters, um, with a rectangle, we have two long sides and two short sides. Um, and they are parallel to each other. Um, that's why we call this a parallelogram. Um, but the short sides are gonna be congruent to each other. So if this side is 11, the other side is also. 11. Um, same deal with the bottom here. The bottom is parallel and congruent to the opposite side. So the two long sides are also congruent to each other. So this is 
20. If the bottom is 20, this guy's 20. And this would be true if it was a rectangle or a square, although a square is even a little easier than that. I'm um, sorry, I can hear my dog clacking into the room here. Um, a square is a little bit easier than that because all the sides will be congruent. Um, so you don't even need to worry about, you know, opposite sides. If you know one side of a square, the idea of a square is that all four sides are the same. So if they told me that this side was 20, all sides are 20. So this one's very specifically a rectangle. It tells us that. Um, so now we can do 11 plus 20 plus 11 plus 20. Or I could do 11 times 2 plus 20 times 2. I can use multiplication there since I know I have two of each. Um, so I'd have 22 plus 40. And I would get 62. All right, so this is 62. And it's 62 since it's meters here. I want to keep it meters again. Again, perimeter is just a length. It's not an area or volume. So we don't have to do squared or cubed. It's just a length around the outside. So if that were a building, you know, how yeah, it's probably more than, you know, 20 meters by 11 meters. Um, kind of depends on the building you're talking about, I guess. But if you wanted to walk around it, you'd have to walk 62 meters. All right, find the area of this rectangle. So now when we're talking about the area of a rectangle, now we are talking about the whole space it takes up. So all this space, I want to know how much space it takes up. And when I'm looking at this idea, I have 8 centimeters and I have 13 centimeters. And basically what I'm saying is there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, well, that was a bad one, 7, 8, like that. So I'm going to pretend like those are centimeters because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 8 centimeters. And then let's try to do this down. 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, five, six, seven, that would be eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So here's kind of a visual of what we're dividing it up. Now these should be the same size squares, and I know they're all different sizes. You're gonna have to excuse my kind of horrible drawing skills here with my writing pad. Um, but Theoretically, each one of these little squares should all be the exact same size. What I did was I divided it up into squares that are one centimeter by one centimeter. And basically the question we're asking is, how many squares are in here? I want to know how many squares are there, because that'll tell me the area. How, how much does it actually take up? So we could count these. We could definitely count them. Um, you'd have to be very careful and make sure that you actually have the right number of lines in order to do this. But another very easy way to do this if I take the 13 and I multiply by the 8, that will also tell me how many squares there are in there. Um, so the idea of a rectangle is just length times width. So we can do the length times the width and we will get our answer here. Um, so let's see. I'm going to stack that instead. So we get 24, 8, 9, 10. So I get 104. And it was centimeters. They're both centimeters. So I have centimeters times centimeters. So it's centimeters squared. We can actually use that exponent idea on the unit. You can also think of this as it's two-dimensional. So this was just meters when I got to the end because it's one-dimensional. It's a length. Just how long is it? When I'm talking about area, I'm talking about two dimensions, length and width. So now it's two-dimensional, so I square it. So there's you know two reasons we can kind of justify why we put the square on there. All right, we're going to keep on moving here. I'm going to go ahead and erase this stuff, just to get it out of my way. Give myself a little bit more room here. Okay, so answer the questions below. Write your answers in simplest form. A square has an area, so area of four feet squared. What is the length of each side? Um, so a square, remember, the special thing about a square is that all the sides are the same all of them. Um, and if we're doing area, just like a rectangle, a square is actually a rectangle. Rectangle is not always a square, but a square is always a rectangle. Um, the only thing you need for a rectangle is it needs to be a four-sided figure, quadrilateral, um, that has 90 degree angles. Um, and the sides are parallel as well, um, but if all four sides are, or all four angles are, um, darn it, if all four sides are perpendicular or right angles, then the 
opposite sides are parallel. Um, they kind of go together there. Um, being parallel does not make them 90 degrees. So some of this stuff can go one way, but not the other. Um, so just be careful about that when you're talking about that stuff. So this is going to be the same thing. It's length times width. Well, if my length and my width are the same, then it's actually x squared. So this is my area, x squared. Well, I also know my area is four feet, um, four feet squared, right? They told me that. So x squared is the same as four feet squared. So I'm going to take the square root. What two numbers do I need to multiply together that they need to be exactly the same to get four. So I'd have to multiply x by itself to get x squared. So that's the square root of x squared. The square root of four feet squared is two feet because it would be two feet times two feet. So what number do I have to multiply by itself to get four feet squared? Two feet. So that's, that's how you do a square root. You're basically taking it out. I'm saying this number was squared. What did I have to multiply by itself to get there? The answer to that question is your answer. That's your square root. So on here, I, my length for this side would be two feet. All right, let's look at the second one. A square has a perimeter. So perimeter of 144 yards. And it's not squared. This is a perimeter. This is a length. It's going around the outside here. And we're going to pretend like I drew a square there because that's more rectangly. But they said a square. So all four sides, again, are the same. And for a perimeter, I want to add the outsides. Well, how many x's do I have? I have four x's. So 4x is the perimeter. So this is equal to p. But perimeter is also, they told us, 144. So we're kind of using a substitution idea here. We're just saying it's 144 yards. All right, well, I want to know what x is. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So x equals... Let's see, we get 3, because it goes in 12 times with 2 left over, and it goes in 6 times there for 24. So 36 yards per side. So it's a, definitely a nice big square there. So that's roughly 36 times 3 if we want to turn that into feet. So that's a pretty darn big square, whatever that is. All right. So... Let's see the next one. We're going to do something very similar, but now we're going to do this with rectangles. Um, so the area of a rectangular parking lot is 3,111 meters squared. If the width of the parking lot is 51 meters, what is the length? So the, the width is 51 meters, and what is the length? So I can put L for length. I don't know. So remember, to find the area of a rectangle, I'm going to do length times width. And that's going to equal the area. Well, they told me the width was 51. I don't know the length, but they also told me what the area was. Like that. Oops. Like, so we have that. So now I can divide both sides by 51. 51 divided by 51 cancels. It just comes down to L. So now I can use my calculator here since they do have the calculator open divided by 51, and I get 61. So it was 61 meters. It's not squared anymore, because this is 50 meters. This is 50 meters squared, 50 meters. So just like when we do regular exponents, when this cancels, meter squared divided by meters, that's going to do 2 minus 1. So this one cancels, and I, I'm left with just the 1 meters when I do the cancellation. That's why I just have meters for my length there. So I get 61. And, all right, so the next one, it says the perimeter of a rectangle, rectangular pool is 388. So remember, oh, meters. Remember, that's around the outside. I'm just adding up. I'm not multiplying this time. It's perimeter. So if the length of the pool is 93 meters, what is the width? Um, so remember, now since I'm talking about perimeter, I need to make sure that I fill in the pieces that aren't filled in here. If this is width, so is this. If this is 93 meters, so is the top. And it wouldn't have mattered if you're, you switched 93 for the sides and width for the top and the bottom. That'd be perfectly fine. Your calculation will still come out the same. So we're going to have 93 times 2 plus 
W times 2 equals 338. And I know I'm multiplying here, but it's just because I'm doubling these. I could also go W plus W plus 93 plus 93. It'll give you the same idea here. The multiplying by 2 just kind of quickens that a little bit. All right, so times 2. So we get 186 plus 2W equals 388. Sorry, 338 minus, because we want to get W by itself. So we're going to start to subtract 186 minus 186, cancel, so we get 2w equals, let's go to the beginning of this guy, well let me, there we go, so we'll go 338 minus the 186, and I get 152, and I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides, so 2 divided by 2 cancels, I have w equals, and we simply need to come back over here one more time and go divided by 2, so we get 76. So this one definitely took a, a few, you know, more steps because I had to write the equation and then go through and solve it like we do with a lot of our other equations. Um, so remember when you're solving your equations, always, always, always pay attention to PEMDAS when you're doing that because um, that definitely can make a big difference if you're not paying attention to those rules. Uh, all right, so next. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So with this guy, the main thing with this one is we need to remember the naming. Um, and if you click on example or you have your notes page, I do have a graphic on the notes page um, specifically for this. And it's actually the graphic right here that we see um, on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this right into my other screen there. So we just have it and it's very easy to reference. There it is. Okay. All right, I'm gonna make that a bit bigger. Okay, so we're basically gonna reference this because the number of sides tells us what the name is for this one because it says, answer the questions about the polygons below, figure A, B, and C, what is, which figure is this? So we have to look at how many sides does it have? And you can look at the sides, you can look at the vertices, really either way, it will work the same. Um, so I can go through and count one, two, three for the vertices or one, two, three for the sides. Three sides is a triangle. Um, so let's see, which figure is a pentagon? Oh, they don't have triangle. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. So if I come over here, five sides is a pentagon. So that's figure B. Hexagon, one, two, three, four, five, six. So hexagon is six sides. So that's figure C. And none of them are uh, an octagon. There, there is no eight sided figure up there. So just because I see a triangle doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to click on triangle. It just kind of depends on what they give me down here. Um, so we're just matching them up based on the number of sides that they typically have. So just kind of a, a review of that idea. Uh, let me get a new one here. Okay. Um, so find the area of the triangle below. Be sure to include the unit, the correct unit in your answer. So if I have a triangle, just like we do there. So there's a triangle. Um, and we have 20 feet for the, the base here. We have seven feet for the height. And then we have 15 feet for the side here. Um, so we want to kind of go through the, the why for this one um, as far as the equation. So we have a triangle. And the formula for the area is area equals 1 half base times height. The base is always the length that's perpendicular to the height. And the height is always this dotted line. I know I didn't do mine dotted, but, um, or dashed. So the base is this 20, and the height is the 7. They're giving you this 15 as extra to see if you know what to do with it. Basically, um, they're just giving you extra information there. We're not even going to use that 15. But if we want to know why is it 1 half base times height, if we go back really quick to the rectangle, we were just doing this. And we had length times width, like that. Well, instead of length, I'm going to call this base. This is the bottom, the base. And instead of width, I'm going to call this the height, like we're standing this rectangle up. So this is base times height. This is a very typical equation when we do base times height. Um, so if I, I convert these really quick just so that we can kind of talk about the triangle equation. And I'm going to do this dashed line like this from corner to corner. We're going to pretend like that's nice and straight. I know it's not. It's a little curved. But what we want to notice is that this line, when I go from corner to corner, or I could have gone from this corner to this corner, 
it cuts the triangle in half. Um, or not the triangle, sorry, the rectangle in half. It creates a triangle that cuts the rectangle in half. So that's quite literally where the half comes from. It's half of a rectangle. Um, if we finish this guy off, it would be a rectangle. This is the diagonal that connects those corners. Something like that. And I know that doesn't look very good, but um, a little closer. Something like that. So it's just half of the entire rectangle that we would see. That's the idea there. Um, so we're going to go one half, area equals one half times the base times the height, which is seven. Um, so you can do this two ways. You can multiply 20 and seven and then divide by two because that's what one half times means. I'm really dividing by two. Um, or you could reduce first. You could do one half times 20. One half of 20, so I'm dividing by two. Um, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 20 divided by 2 is 10, so really 1 divided by 1 kind of cancels itself out, it, it goes away, um, so it just kind of reduces away, so I have 10 times 7, so area equals 70, or I could have done 20 times 7, and I would have gotten 140, and then I could have divided by 2, and I would have gotten 70. Either way, if you notice, I get 70. Doesn't matter which method I use there if I multiply and then divide, or if I reduce and multiply. I think reducing and multiplying is a little easier because we tend to deal with smaller numbers that way. So it kind of just depends on preference there. Um, we want to make sure since it's an area, area is two-dimensional. So I want to make sure that I grab my feet squared. All right. And again, we can think of that idea where it's base times height, so we want to make sure that we're, we're using that. Um, all right. So they do give us scratch paper on this one. It says scratch area, not part of the answer, because they understand looking at this one is a little easier. So it says find the area and perimeter of the rectangle with vertices 5, negative 3, 5, 4, 0, 4, and 0, negative 3. So it's not part of the answer. You don't have to fill this in, but I highly suggest you fill it in because it makes it so much easier to look at. There's two different ways to do perimeter, um, or, or not perimeter area, but finding the, the length of a side. We can either count if they're right across from each other or directly above and below each other, so horizontal or vertical. If they're diagonal lines at all, so like maybe if the rectangle was kind of wonky, crooked a little bit, well, we wouldn't, we'd have to use the distance formula. So I want to make sure that my, my lines are nice and straight, so I'm going to go 5, negative 3, 5, 4, so they're right above each other, yay, so that's going to be easy to count. And then I have 0, 4, those are right across from each other, yay, and then 0, negative 3, right across from each other, right above and below each other. So that's definitely going to be very easy to calculate the side lengths here. Um, and I can connect these. Again, this is not part of the answer, it says that, so you don't have to fill this all in to get credit on your answer. And in fact, it's not going to change the point value that you get here. Um, it just gives you something visually to look at. So if I want to know for perimeter on here, I want to know what's the length of the, the short side and what's the length of the long side. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Um, Cause I went, you know, zero to five, so I can count it or I can just say, well, I started zero and I'm over at five. So it's a length of five. The top is five and the bottom is five. So I have two of those, or I could say five plus five. Either way means the same thing. Plus, what's the length of the side here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven. Remember, that's the length of this right side and the left side. So again, times two. So I'd have 10 plus 14. So perimeter equals 24 units. So it's 24. If I were to walk all the way around here, it'd be 24 units. Whatever this unit size is, we don't necessarily know. It's just square units. The area, so I'm going to go back to length and width. So I have 5 times 7. So 5 times 7 is 35 units. Again, if I were to count the squares in here, this is kind of a little nicer looking than the one I did, right? Because they're nice straight lines. There would be 35 squares in here. So we're just, when we say that the area, we're dividing it up into one unit squares and then saying, okay, how many are there now? That's the the basic idea of, of area. 
All right. I think, so we're going to do one more of these, and then I think we're going to do a circle one, like I said at the beginning here. So find the perimeter of the parallelogram with these vertices. So we're going to go 3, 5, whoop, positive 5, 3, 5. I went three, four, three, five, there we go. Um, negative four, two, three, one, and negative four, negative two. Um, and then I'm gonna connect these. So two of these sides are gonna be very easy to get. These two that I just connected, right above and below each other. So I have one, two, three, four. And the thing about a parallelogram is that this side is also gonna be four three, four. So the a parallelogram, which is the same thing as a rectangle, but parallelograms can be kind of um, tilted a little bit like this one is. So I know my, my width, I'll call my width, is going to be four. So I have four times two, and this is my width. Same thing for area. I'm going to have a width of four. What I need to know though is what is my length? Because I don't know my length. I don't know what to multiply by two here and I can't simply count it when it's diagonal. I'm gonna need to use the distance formula, um, which we learned, you know, that was a um, couple sections ago when we were in chapter nine, I believe. Um, might have been actually beginning of chapter 10. Um, so the distance formula is D equals the square root of the X coordinates subtracted, so the difference of the x-coordinates, and then we square it, plus the difference of the y-coordinates, and again we square that. So we're going to do, you know, two coordinates here, so we'll do negative 4, and what is this guy, negative 4 and 2, so we'll have negative 4, 2, and then this one is 3, 5, so 3, 5, like that. So here are our two coordinates, so this is x1, y1, this is x2, y2. I could have also grabbed the bottom two coordinates here. So I need to make sure I'm grabbing two of the correct coordinates though. I couldn't grab this corner and this corner. I don't want to know the distance between these two. I specifically want to know either this distance or the top distance. Once I know one of them, rules of a parallelogram tell me that they're the same. Um, all right, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to start to fill this in. So I have distance equals the square root squared. So this is the stuff that's not going to change. This piece, these are all part of the equation. The other parts though, they are going to change a little bit. So we have x, 2x, sorry not 2x, x, um, x2, I guess we can call it x2, 3, and then at minus x1, which is negative 4, and if you notice I left it, it's minus negative 4. That matters because that's going to change to a positive here, because it's a double negative. All right, and then we have y2, which is 5, and we have y1, which is 2. So it makes it really easy if you write them out and you give yourself little labels to fill this little equation in here. This is actually a direct um, result of Pythagorean theorem, which we also practiced a couple sections ago. All right, so we have um, 3 plus 4 is 7, and then 5 minus 2 is 3, so 7 squared, remember that's not 7 times 2, it's 7 squared, so we get 49. And then 3 squared is 9. So let's see, we get um, 58 square root. So it looks like they actually know that that's going to happen because they have that as part of this. So if I were to break this down, um, we would have 2 times, because I know I can divide by 2 since it's even, so let's see, that would go in twice, and that would leave me with 1, 18, so 29, 2 and 29, there's no squares at all in there, so I wouldn't do anything with that, I would just leave the square root of 58, so it's going to be square root of 58 times 2, and then times square root of 58. So. Now I can go through and I can finish these, so 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 times square root of 58, I just go 2 square root of 58 like that. And then with this one, 4 times um, the square root of 58, I'm just going to write 4 square root of 58, just like I did with the 2 up here. So we just kind of leave them like that. 
Um, oh, and I just noticed I did area for no reason. It didn't ask me for area, but not a huge calculation there. Um, all right, so for some reason I thought I read both. Plus two square root of 58. All right. Yay. Okay, so the last one we're going to do here is circumference and area. So find the circumference and the area of a circle with diameter 8. Um, so first we just need to remind, or remember, a circle, which I know I drew mine a little bit wonky here. Let's see. I can do a better one because this one actually has a circle program. Mm, pretty good there. All right. And then we have a center here. Um, try to get it actually in the center. And all points on this circle are the same distance from the center. And we call that distance a radius. So it doesn't matter where I draw it from, as long as I'm going from the center to the side, it's the same exact distance. No matter what, no matter how many times I draw it, again, it has to come from the center like that. So that's called a radius. If we go all the way from one side to the other, like this, and we go through the center, we call that a diameter. And it's just made up of two radii because it goes from center to side, center to side. That's the definition of a radius. Well, a diameter just is two of them put together. So just kind of a quick review on the, the um, terminology there. So this is diameter, the whole thing, and it's two radii. So if I'm given the diameter and I want to know what the radius is, I can just divide it by two. It'll evenly split into two pieces. Um, or if I wanted the diameter, I could multiply a radius by two. All right, so we, we're going to find both the circumference and the area. So we need to know what is the circumference, what's the formula. It's not as simple as, yes, it's the, the length around the outside. That is basically, it's the perimeter of a circle, but we specifically call it a circumference. But we need a formula for this since it's round. We can't just add a length up. Um, so it's pi, um, or sorry, 2 pi r, which is 2 times pi times r. Pi is a ratio for a circle um, that relates um, the radius back to the circumference um, and or area. Um, so it kind of does both. Um, so it's just, it's one of those consistent ratios that we always have in a circle so we can use it to calculate certain things. Um, so we have this guy here. We can also use C equals diameter times pi because two times R is the diameter. Two r's, two radii, is it one diameter. So we can use either one of these. Um, for area, we have pi r squared, and that's the only one we can use. We can't use diameter on that one because r squared is r times r. That's not r times two, that's r times r. So that's different. We need the radius for this one. Um, and they also tell us to use 3.14 for this instead of clicking the pi button on a calculator. Um, this is a rounded version of pi. Um, all right, it says do not round your answer, so we don't want to do any rounding. So over here, we're told that the diameter is 8. So I'm going to go ahead and use this guy. 8 times 3.14. So what do we get there? 8 times 3.14. Why is it not writing? There we go. So we get 25.12. I'm not going to do any rounding. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that right in there. Um, we want to make sure that we choose the correct unit. Remember circumference is a perimeter. It's just the length around the outside. If I were to roll this circle, how far would it go? So since it's centimeters, it would go 25.12 centimeters. Not centimeters squared, just centimeters. So area now, oops, I didn't mean to close that. Um, we're going to do pi times, well I need r. So I'm going to divide this by 2, and that'll get, tell me that this is 4. Each radii is 4. So it's 4 squared. And 4 squared is not 8, because it's 4 times 4. So I'm going to go 3.14, that's what they told me to use for pi, times 4 squared, which is 4 times 4, not 4 times 2. So definitely a little different there. We definitely get different answers. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing I see students kind of um, make a mistake on there is that they forget that an exponent doesn't mean times 2 um, when it's squared. It means it's that number times itself. Alright, so I get 50.24, no rounding. This is an area, 
So now I'm, it's not a perfect example, but it's length times width because this is centimeters squared. So that means centimeters times centimeters. So we'd have centimeters squared. Anytime we have area, it's going to be the unit squared. Um, all right. So that was section six. I will see you in section seven.